few would have considered it a silent night, a holy night. Travelers jostled in the city gates. Weary fists pounded on closed doors, pleading on the outside, arguing from within, all to the same refrain, no room. Among the houses rang raucous Roman laughter, census takers with comfortable quarters, and plenty of food and wine. There is little peace and less goodwill between stranger and villager here. Somewhere a dog barked, a lamb bleated, a woman moaned, and a baby cried. Out on the hillsides, exposed to the cold night, without even a stable for warmth, shepherds huddled around the fire, guarding their flocks against thieves and wolves. Suddenly, a light to split the darkness, a voice a song, a chorus of angels. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a child, a son, a shepherd, a king, a savior which is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men. Awaken, O little town that cannot sleep. Hear the shepherd's words. The angel's message. And arise to a sound unfamiliar. The triumph of joy. I tell you, that hearing, you know, stories from your past about food or uh, the sounds is just powerful. It brings back so many memories, and I think just hearing you talk, some of you talk about parents uh, and the experience you have, and, and what you were brought into, to you know, through marriage, through uh, other cultures, maybe that you were exposed to. It's, it's neat to hear other stories, and so in a few minutes you'll get to hear one of mine as well. So uh, let's read our passage this morning, which is Luke chapter two. Uh, verses 7 through 20, and then we're going to read, I'm going to read at the end, three verses from Matthew chapter 2 as well. Feel free to follow along up here. Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over them. And there were and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that, you will, that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all in Jerusalem with him. So many words in that text that uh, ascribe to the different senses and about what people heard and see, I can't help but be struck by the fact that what you hear during any time of the season, but particularly this season, depends upon your perspective. 
how they were, how many of these characters that we read about were in amazement and awe, and yet we find Herod disturbed. So here's one opportunity that I will share a story from my childhood. And so let me just preface this by saying I'm very thankful that you guys have already accepted us as members <laughs> before I share this. But I, I just feel obligated to share just how wonderful of a child that I was and how angelic I was. So there was one rule in my household growing up when I was a kid, and that was we could get up, my two sisters and I could get up, we could explore any, I mean, if we could take the presents, we could shake them, we could try to make a list of guessing what they were, we could feel through the stocking on the outside, and try to have everything figured out before we started opening them. But the one rule was we couldn't unopen anything until my parents were up. <laughs> and some years, it would take forever. I remember the anticipation just shaking in my body. Sometimes if you see Luke, he just gets a shake. And that's, and maybe not to that extreme, but that's how I was Christmas morning. Just waiting. And finally, they would awaken from their slumber at the late hour of 7 o'clock. <laughs> well, some years, the anticipation grows to be so great. And so I uh, decided to take a present, so if you want to... Picture. Here was a present that was not given to me, it was given a prior year. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I don't know if this is the exact model, but this thing came with sound. So, I hatched up a plan one Christmas morning that eh, I didn't want to wait till 7. So, I may have accidentally set this aircraft outside of my parents' bedroom door, and I may have accidentally pushed the buttons more than one time. And I may have accidentally missed why they were a little bit extra grouchy that year. <laughs> By the way, since they're not in the room, please, if it's not too late, I'm going to ask that you don't share this story with my kids. <laughs> uh, but it just... I, I was struck by this, you know, I've heard sermons preached about the senses before, but I was just struck by how much of what we, I mean, really, all of what we experience in this life, or most of it, is through our senses. What you're experiencing right now, what the things that are going through your mind, what you're looking at, what you hear, are through your senses. And so my sermon in a sentence this morning is this. It is by our senses that we learn, gain insights, and internalize all that is true and helpful for life. Now, if there was ever a truth that needed to be internalized, it's the story about how God spoke all things into existence, and he continues to sustain his creation by his breath. And yet, even in this majesty, he loves his creation so much that he sent them as a helpless, or he sent his son as a helpless baby to touch us at our point of need. Now, we don't always understand the immensity of his love, but he speaks his love in terms that we do understand. The sound of a baby's cry on a cold night. The smell of low animal-filled stables, the rough texture of a feeding trough with coarse straw, the brightness of a new star in the dark night sky, and the taste of the bread of life to feed the souls of us all. And since that night two millennia ago, we find this division between before Christ, B.C. and A.D. That lives have been changed, countless lives have been changed by this baby boy. And that have led to dozens of symbols and traditions that we use as an effort to express an event that was both divine and human. All of our senses, as you heard people share this morning, now I ask you specifically to share about your own experiences, not about your experiences about what you see read in the text, but all of our senses help bring us a deep longing to share personal experiences that have happened in our past. And so we focus today on the senses. 
So the first sense we're going to focus on is the sight of Christmas. The sight of a baby, born in a stable, resting on a nest of hay, made these same shepherds race out to surrounding villages, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. The wonder of Christmas is something we still want those around us to see. Maybe you've said in the past, come on over and see my tree. Or, would you like to drive around to see the lights, we tell our kids and grandkids. Or, might get more personal here, hey, how about we go check out the light show in Litchfield that's going on, we tell our neighbors. In fact, I heard about the light show from one of my neighbors. That's how I learned about it. Lights. Wreaths, pageants, angel choirs, stars, garland, sparkling centerpieces, packages, colorful displays, decorations. So much to see at Christmas. Now what child, and frankly I love this time of the year for so many things, so many reasons, but, so I'm probably including myself in this even though I'm not a kid anymore, but what child hasn't stood in awe of the lights catching the crystals of freshly fallen snow. Or watched in wonder as skaters glide by like angels. Or snowflakes landing on your tongue. I recall one time driving back from college and I happened to come around a corner. It's the only time I've ever experienced it to this degree of awe. And I came around the corner and we had had a freeze the night before. And so all of the trees were covered with ice. And the sun was up at just the perfect angle so that as I came around the curve, it was just the most beautiful sight to to behold. It's hard for me to even explain what that was, what it appeared to be. It was just unbelievable. Christmas is a sight to behold. The sounds of Christmas, the giggles and whispers of children wondering what presents they will receive, resounding bells coming from the Salvation Army bell ringers in front of the grocery store, the crinkling of paper being unfolded that morning, melodious carolers singing out in the crisp winter sky, the music of the traffic driving by, passengers rushing to and fro to get and bring home gifts, logs crackling in the fireplace, and the hot bubbling of chili simmering on the stove. Who can keep from from humming this harmonious song of life? Christmas is one time during the year when everything winds down for some moment. And in our case, to tell, retell the most amazing and greatest story ever. The giver of music first started the whole world singing with the angel chorus. And the song of life will never be satisfied until all creation joins in singing our praise to God for all that he has done. The touch of Christmas. First feel the soft skin of a baby who is God's made most touchable for us who are far off. Tenderly embrace a child to honor him who was loved in a baby's blanket held in human arms. Touch the rough texture of the well-worn wooden manger, well wooden manger and the straw that surrounds it. Touch, touch the moist noses of the cows and the horses that stand nearby. Feel the night air. Feel the needles of the evergreen tree which announces that because of Jesus, we shall always live. Have you noticed that about the evergreen, how it's around 
and survives all year long. Touch the snow that covers the ground and remember the covering of the atonement that makes us whiter than snow. Touch the red berries on the branches we gather and put in all sorts of containers, remembering that the child we celebrate would one day shed his blood so that its life-giving qualities could fill us, no matter the shape, size, or condition of the vessels. Touch the lights as they burn warm. String them everywhere. Light the streets and the houses, the cathedrals and the back streets, for the chill of death has been replaced by warmth and light. Touch your children, your neighbors, your community with reconciliation. Take someone a warm cake. Extend a warm handshake. Offer the thawing warmth of forgiveness. Hold and ring the silver bells. Ring out the news that the creator of the galaxies has touched us. Yes, ring the bells and pass on the good news. The smell of Christmas. The fragrance of real pine. I remember the fragrance of the real pine tree that my father cut in the Michigan woods and brought into our, ho into our house. The smell of cranberry simmering. Mom baking bread in the oven. Popcorn popping to string the tree. And spicy pumpkin pies cooling on the kitchen counter. The fragrance of clean sheets and blankets from the cedar closets pulled up around my neck as I was tucked into bed, waiting for a faraway Christmas morning. The warming smell of hickory logs burning in the pot-bellied stove that heated the seldom-used front room through these special days of celebration. Close your eyes for a moment. I've seen some of you doing that already. But just take a deep breath and inhale those the aromas that you think of when you think of Christmas. And finally, the taste of Christmas. America truly is the great melting pot. The foods of all of our various heritages have marched right onto our Christmas table, many of them bringing us back to our roots while also making each family celebration, even here, unique. Whatever your family history may be, as Tim alluded to, food is an essential part of it. Kitchens are a place to gather, to make fruitcakes, Christmas cookies, cream pies, uh, turkeys, hams, roast, and breads. They're put into the oven or, and then left to simmer on the stove. Some of my family's favorite tastes, by the way, I'm going to just preface this saying they were my family, not so much mine, so don't take too much stock in this, but um, we're hot chocolate. I say this because I'm next, I'm going to say coffee, and those of you that have gotten to know me know I don't touch coffee, but, um, and Christmas tea. And as I think about Christmas, my, my Christmas is growing up, it seemed like it was one long uh, tasting party. From home to home and family to family, we find ways to say Christmas is love, taste, and see. So why do Christmas symbols matter? Why, do I, why did I take a Sunday to, to bring back, hopefully, some fond memories of things from your past? Well, first of all, symbols are a very human way that we use to remember the meaning of things from the past. Light, warmth belonging, satisfaction of deep, unnameable hungers, fresh and eternal spiritual pilgrimage, the divine gifts, the return of the song of life. All of these are helped by using a symbol to help express it in a tangible way. I'm sure each person in here has had a difficult time at one point in their life of being able to express something and so a way to bring that back down is to use something to symbolize what you're after, what you mean. Each person here has been the recipient of a rich heritage of traditions and symbols. 
And they've been given to us probably by our parents and our grandparents and maybe our friends so that we can experience and communicate the unfathomable, unfathomable love of God. He is a God who came to walk with us, to touch us where we were broken, to feed us the true water and the food of the Spirit, and to be love made visible. And so as we prepare to celebrate Christmas, use all of your senses, every avenue you have to embrace this amazing story. As you bake alongside maybe your kids or grandkids, and they, they smell, you know, share the smells of Christmas and the taste and so forth, the sights. Bring to story the life as Paula did this morning, reading Luke 2. Let's remember that, that we are always to tell and retell the reason for our traditions. We don't have traditions just for traditions, but as a story to bring light and testament ultimately to what God has done in our lives. Giving thanks for the reason that we celebrate. And so let's promise each other that we are to be a highway for other souls to reach Christ rather than to become walls that hinder in that process. And so it is by our senses that we learn, gain insights, and internalize all that is true. So be aware as Christmas Day approaches of all that God has presented before you in our senses. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the gifts of sight and hearing and touch and taste and smell, Lord, things that we often take for granted, we overlook. And yet, Lord, you have given them to us for us to see without fail who you are from the very beginning of the creation of this world up until the birth of your Son, and yet still to this day, proceeding towards your eventual return. Lord, let us celebrate this season with what we have inter in internalized through our senses. Help us to share that with those who come into our households, but also those with whom we see along our streets and in our communities. Lord, this message of hope and love and peace and joy that is so sorely needed in our world. Help us to be a witness to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand if you're able for the closing benediction, and then we will have our last song. Be a people of joy. Let joy live in your heart and share the joy of Christ with all whom you meet. Share the joy by seeing good in each other. Share joy by remembering the good times and hoping for good times to come. Share joy by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share joy. As you go out into the wonders of God's creation, share joy, peace, and hope with those whom you meet. Amen.